Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to look at how to use a table to store the end user preferences and then apply it to database objects. So to be clear, these aren't your personal preferences for the database as a whole. This is for the individual end users of your database. Maybe they want to change the background color, maybe they like a dark mode, maybe text size needs to be increased or change the font, that kind of thing. So overall, it's about being able to store these values and apply it to various objects. So let's start by creating a table. We're going to click on Create Table. We're going to click on View Design View. It wants a name, so we'll call this End Underscore User Underscore Preferences. Again, just reminding yourself that these aren't your preferences; these are for the individual people who log into the database. We click on OK. We will eventually have a primary key. It will probably be some ID for the end user, but we're going to do this in an iterative manner. You can always go back and add more fields to the table. It's not a big deal. So we want just the core functionality of storing a value in a table and applying it to some kind of object attribute. Then we'll add on to that as well as letting the end user actually select those values. So. We'll get rid of the primary key. We'll call this BG underscore color. So eventually there'll be more fields, but we'll start with BG color. And the data type will be short text. And then we go to view. It wants to be saved again. And then for BG color, we'll just enter, say, green. It just makes it really obvious if it works. And then we'll close the table. So let's go ahead and click on Create, and then Blank Form. And this is the form that we're going to apply the attribute changes to. We're going to click on View, Design View. We're going to click on Design. And then with the form itself selected, that's what that black dot there means, we're going to go to Property Sheet, and we're going to do a couple things. So let's shut off the Navigation Bar and Record Selectors. They're not particularly relevant to this particular project, but it's always a good idea to do that to lock down your database. You don't want unintended navigation. You want to be able to control exactly how people navigate your database. So record selectors and navigation buttons are set to no on the format tab on the property sheet of this form. Now, also, we're going to go to data and we're going to select a record source. So a record source would be a table or query. In this case, we only have one, so we're going to select that one. So as a record source, that means if we have objects on this form, the records they'll have access to will be from what we've chosen here. And we're going to do exactly that. We're going to click on the text box, draw a text box. We can delete the label because we do not want the end user to actually see this. This is just for the easy transfer of data from one object to another. We're basically taking information from the table, putting it into here, and then taking it from here and applying it to the form. There's probably a more direct way, but I don't really want to get into spaghetti code. You'll see just how simple this is. So if you click on this, you can then choose the properties for the text field as opposed to the properties of the form. So that's the form that's selected. That's the individual control. And for the control source, as you can see, there's BG color. So that's a record that's within here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're now going to take the value from this and apply it to the form. So how do we do that? Well, we go back to the form. We're going to click on event. And when the form itself loads, we're going to have some VB code run. So on load... We're going to click here, and again, it's the form that's selected, not the object, not the individual control, I should say. So on load, click on the ellipsis. We're going to do code builder. As you can see, it says form load, so it's indicating when this happens. And we're going to say if me dot, and it's text looks like it's text zero that's the only text box out there if me dot text zero is equal to green which is what we chose then we want something to happen let's put in the end if so i don't forget then me dot detail and remember, when you have a form, details. So you're saying 
the object this script is attached to, so me, is referring to the form as a whole, and then the detail portion of the form, and then the back color. Well, the thing is, we use the word green because that's it's a, a word that's meaningful to the user. But what you actually have to use would be VB green. So basically what we're doing is, we're, I don't want to say we're doing a conversion per se, but we kind of are. We're, we're taking the information that the user put in and we're changing that. I suppose you could set up the table so that it automatically appends VB. Six one way, one half dozen the other, whichever you think is more easily to maintain. And we'll save this. So form. So again, the text box on the form, if the value for that text box is green, which it's pulling from the table, then apply VB green to the back color attribute. And if I haven't forgotten anything, that should work. So let's close this just to make sure everything's applied. And there we go. Now, obviously, we want to hide this because we don't want them to see this. But we're going to go to Design View. Click on that. Click on Format. Third one down is, is Visible. Ch choose No. Save. Close. There you go. So it doesn't have to be visible to apply. Okay, so good start. We now see how we can take a value from a table and apply it to an attribute on a form. You could do this also with other, um, you can do this with other objects as well. You can do it with control objects. Like you can apply it to say a, you can apply it to say, uh, like we mentioned, the font size. You have to be a little bit careful because usually if you change font size, then you're moving everything around because everything gets adjusted in its position. So something like that you want to be careful of. But maybe you could change rather than font size, maybe you could change what font it's using. Who knows, maybe they like everything written in Comic on. Okay, so the last bit is really to now give the user the ability to change that value. We set it. Now we want the user to be able to change it at will. So let's do that. So let's click on create blank form. Again, we're going to shut off the navigation and record selectors. So view, design view, make sure the form itself is selected, design, property sheets, format, Record selector, no. Navigation buttons, no. And now we're also going to have the table be the record source, just like we did for the other form. So data, record source, and user preferences. Now the big difference is this table is, excuse me, this form is going to write to the table, whereas this form read from the table. So the flow of data is the exact opposite. Form into table rather than table into form. So now we're going to do, since we've made a record selector, a record source, excuse me, we now need to click on the combo box and just draw on a combo box. And you're going to have a few choices. The top choice you would use if one of three things, really. One, you've got a lot of entries, so you don't want to manually enter them. So you're going to just import a text file or CSV file or a spreadsheet into a table. So you've got a lot of entries. Manual entry is not an option. Then you'd use the first choice. Second, if you have choices that change a lot, it's a lot easier just to go into a table to make those changes. Third, if these values are going to appear in multiple places, you don't want to type that out multiple times. So you type it once into a table and then every, every place that needs to access those values would have access. None of those apply. We're only going to use three values, so we're just going to type in the values that I want. Next. And we're just going to type in, let's do this alphabetically. So blue, green, yellow. Next. Key. We absolutely do want to save this. That's the whole point. We want to store this in a field. We want to start back in the BG color field. Next. 
And this is just the label. So this isn't the name of the field itself. It's not the name of the text box. This is just the label. So you can use it to say give instructions, select color, and finish. So we can just take that, put it here. So select color. This is still just actually combo zero. Okay. So now what we're going to do, if we run this, okay, it will save to that table. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll call this options menu. So options underscore menu. And let's close it. And so now if we open up options menu, there we go. So let's change this to say blue. We'll close this. You'd probably add a button for your end users that says save and apply, save and exit, that kind of thing. I'm just doing the basic core functionality here, but we can do that too if you want. So we're now going to open the table just to make sure that process worked. It did. It's blue. And you want to make sure it's not creating new records. You want just one record that gets overwritten. Okay. Now, the form itself won't use blue yet because we need to add in that coding. So right-click form and choose design view. And again, with the form itself selected, property sheets, go to event, go back to that event procedure. So we only said what to do with green. We need to apply that to the other colors. So if the value is yellow, change it to VB yellow. And again, the VB portion, this is non-negotiable. This is an actual value that is meaningful to access, whereas this is not. So you, you can't skip. You have to use this formatting. And this last one will be blue. So if I haven't missed any steps, that should now work. Let's close that. So we selected blue, so the background should now be blue. And it is. So let's go back to our options menu. We tried blue, we tried green, let's do yellow. Let's make sure the yellow changed, it did. And there you go. So that is really the core functionality of storing user preferences in a table and then applying it to some attribute of some database object. Now, I do want to call something out and that this, while is a very easy process of applying user preferences to database objects, it actually is going to create you some troubles down the road depending on what exactly this database does. So for instance, Data entry is usually done through a form. And one of the ways that you make that happen is the table that is being modified is set as the record source. We just looked at that with our options menu, okay? The form is being used to change the table. But this form is reading information from a table. So in other words, you couldn't just assign a, another table to this form. You, you've already assigned a record source, okay? So to if you wanted to use this approach, you would then have to take a different approach to record saving. So for instance, whereas if I had applied, let's just create another form and I'll show you what I mean. So let's go to create blank form. No, I'm not going to shut those off since this is just a quick demo. If I assign, if we go to design, we go to property sheet, and we go to data, and again we choose that, okay, the end user preferences. You saw me use a drop down box, but what you can actually do, if you go to add additional uh, existing fields, you can actually add the field itself, okay? So we kind of took a two step process with options. We took a combo box and linked it to a field. You can actually drop the field itself into the form. Well, you can't do that with this form because you've already selected a, a, a record source, okay? So 
if you're going to do data entry or viewing data, it makes life a lot more difficult on you. Data entry is possible because you can just use SQL statements. So basically what would happen, you would just create a whole bunch of additional text fields. And then when you close the form or you have a button that says save record, you would then have SQL statements that execute the updates. I already have some tutorials that show how to do that. So just keep in mind that this is very easy, but depending on what you want to do with this, this could create problems down the road. So it might not be the best way to do it, but it is a way to do it. And again, it all depends what you're going to do with this form. Are you doing data entry? It's possible. Then you can use the SQL statements. But if you're trying to browse data, it's going to make life much more difficult on you. You probably would have to use maybe a sub form or something like that. And even that in the sub form, I don't think the uh, color would apply to it. I'd have to test that. So anyways, that's the basics of applying an attribute uh, from a user preferences. And hopefully this has been helpful to you.